So this is a Q50 materials feel about what they were in the uh, M. Okay. All right, so this is the inside of a Q50. So I'm gonna be taking a quick look at the Q50. The last time I think I came here, I was looking at the M45 or the M37. This was a while ago. So it has this dual stack, dual stack navigation system, which basically bumps up the price. So we're gonna go out in one of the ones that has the electric steering. And I'm only doing this because um, other fellow car reviewer, Michael Koresh, asked if anybody had a chance to try the uh, steering to see what it felt like. So anyway, this car starts, base price is 41350 Now, I took a couple pictures of some stickers, and the price goes up from there very quickly to all the way up to about $52,000 loaded, fully, fully loaded. The navigation package is $1,400. This one only has navigation and the moonroof, as you can see. The materials are roughly the same as what you'd find in the G37. Roughly the same. Now the only thing you're... Uh, the battery in this one is dead, so I'm gonna have to get one that has uh, power in order to take it out. But uh, it's it, it feels premium. One thing I do like about Infinity is uh, their cars actually have a high quality premium feel. They're definitely higher, in my opinion, than Lexus, except Lexus likes to throw big amounts of wood at you. And, um... The woods that they put in, like, they, they have brushed wood that they shine and polish and shit. But guess what? I don't give a fuck about wood because for the very simple reason, I'm not driving a tree. I'm driving a car. I don't mind having synthetic material because when you really think about it, it's all about metal and plastic anyway. It's a car. And someday it'll be all about uh, carbon fiber. So, um, yeah, this looks pretty cool. Let me get ready to take this bad boy out. It's got the 37 engine, the 3.7. And the 3.7 was actually pretty fast in the uh, M37 that I drove. And this car is lighter, so I have high expectations for it. Let's see what the trunk looks like. And let's see what the engine compartment looks like. Let's see, how do you open the trunk? I think this is the trunk right here. Oh, you know what? This one, the battery's dead. I'm going to have to use one. The battery's alive. Okay, so basically, I'm here test driving Infinity Q50s. These are Infinity Q50s. Basically, the Infinity Q50 is a bigger car than the G, and it's a smaller car than the M. Now, the uh, they have uh, all-wheel drives mostly. They come with the 3.7 liter V6. Normally, I talk smack about V6, but... In the Infinity's case, strangely enough, they have some very powerful V6s. Like, they got a 328 horsepower V6 that makes like 272 uh, torque or something. So they're actually pretty powerful. But, um, these are Q50s. And that's the uh, hybrid. And the, the hybrid looks, this is a pretty good looking uh, bronze that they got. They have a bronze-ish hybrid. Now, the only problem is, like, with hybrids, they're usually pretty expensive. Like, hybrids usually carry premium cost. The hybrid one starts at 48150 and with the equipment, like the navigation, the kick plates and all that, rises to 4155 So you're talking, uh, I'm sorry, 51455 So you're basically talking $52,000 for the hybrid before you even, uh, and, and that's what the dealer fees. And then when you put on the taxes, you're talking about $3,500 of, of tax. This is a Q50 all-wheel drive premium. The premium starts a lot lower, 41350 and then with the equipment like the navigation package, which is $1,400, it rises to 43855 Now, in my opinion, it doesn't make sense to get a hybrid unless you're one of these uh, people who, you know, have special parking because there's some college campuses and whatnot, and there's some places where the government has set aside special parking in order to trick people into buying hybrids and EVs because the simple fact of the matter is you're going to, I mean, even with this one, you're paying like a $9,000 premium to be in a fucking hybrid car. So what? So that you can use the HOV lanes or, or what? So you can have special parking or so you can get some kind of gas credit. That doesn't make sense. You're, you're financing $9,000 more. 
If you're financing $9,000 more, you could have saved that money, use that shit on gas. And these cars, as the guy was telling me, requires premium fuel. Now, you can use regular, but it won't get the rated performance, which I don't have a problem with because most of the people buying these are like old people and retirees who just want to, you know, drive around in an, in an Infinity for whatever reason. They like Infinity. And um, this one's 41350 with the navigation and those equipments. It rises to 44275 So the very premium one of these cars, when it has everything, is about 52000 and it's not a hybrid. What they have now is they have this electric steering where um, basically uh, the car handles what's called steering by wire. And steering by wire basically, it, 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 it's not that it disconnects the link between the driver and the steering. It's designed to be a faster or more uh, direct electronic artificial steering. Now the only problem is some people say that they, they think it feels artificial and they say they, they'd rather have more road feel well that's what i came here to check out so i just drove around in the regular version and uh, i'm gonna take out one of the uh, ones that has that equipment in it what's it called the uh the uh, steering the touring package that has all the equipment so that i can test drive that uh, that artificial steering i want to see what that feels like but for the most part this car is very quiet when you kick down that pedal when you push down that pedal to the floor it gets a little loud where you want it to get loud but basically it's a 3.7 liter v6 so you're getting 22 miles to the gallon 19 or 18 if you drive rough and you'll still make over 20 if you drive nicely so it's a v6 it's not the fastest thing in the world but these Infinity engines are actually pretty good. And I, I really like the 45 and the 37. The 37 was the V6, the 45 was the V8. I really liked them, but Infinity's not my type of car. And I'm, it's not that I'm into just Mopar. It's just that Infinity, it's a cool car, but it just doesn't speak to me. It's, it's like when I drive by you, I don't, you know, it's like, yeah, you look at me and be like, oh, you know, oh, he's got an Infinity. It's like, nah, that's not enough for me. I want you to say, yeah, he's got an SRT8 and that shit's got 500 plus horsepower and it sounds like that he's got a turbocharger. That's, that speaks to me. That's, that's what speaks to me. So, um, let me go and, uh, grab the, uh, what is it called? The, uh, touring car so I can drive that one. Right. How does it now? Is this two? This is two different things, right? Two different things. The top one is the eight inch. Uh, the bottom one is the seven inch. Both are touch and screen. This one you don't touch. Both are touch screen. Oh, the both. That's touch. for the navigation. The bottom one is for the infinity in touch. The infinity in touch is a thing. It's like your like your iPad right here. Okay, let's your personal. You can set your personal profile. You can set your key. So when you enter the car, it will it will welcome you. Okay. You can put, download all the apps like Facebook, you can check your email, you can send text messages. Now this car doesn't have navigation. Okay. So that's why I wouldn't show anything right here. It will just show the clock or the phone book if the phone is connected, call history. So this is like a base one? This one's a base one? Yeah, this one's the base one. Okay. Yep. And over here you can like have an app garage, you can see your driving performance, you can see you have the infinity mode selector which means you can put your mode to the sport mode like an echo like a all wheel drive like i mean what are we going to do over here yeah. okay you can see your acceleration and all the thing okay so like fuel can okay so exactly. it basically tells you how little how, miles per gallon exactly how you driving habits are how you driving it okay that's cool so you can see acceleration and all that thing all right. okay and this knob it's called infinity dial mode okay it used to be right here the previous model okay it's just like a control all the navigation and all that stuff right there on the top screen mm -hmm. okay so you press it up and down whatever you want to do over there over there okay? oh okay it slides it's kind of like the mercedes one exactly gotcha over here it's a drive mode okay drive on me more means that so you can change it to the sport oh okay personal, standard snow echo okay. you're not going to change the power in the car We'll just change the gear ratios let's say put on the sport and you're gonna feel a little bit like sporty okay yep uh your heated seats right here both sides there's your climate control things you got the steering controls right here this is for the cruise control 
that's for the voice recognition system which is called VRS or Bluetooth you can change the volume all the stuff right here okay. sunroof is a standard feature backup camera is a standard feature heater seats and heater steering wheel is a standard feature on this vehicle oh, okay all right over here in this console you got your USB ports oh good yes yep you got the auxiliary port if you call you take with navigation you're gonna have the memory slot memory card slot too okay so it's got two USBs one video one video in one audio in and memory card if you call you have to call with the navigation system okay all right, all right. Uh, this we can have the active trace control system which means let's say on the cotton ring I will sense I mean the power wheels will send this sensor computer will press the ease on the gas will press the brake a little bit on your vehicle okay if you get the vehicle with the technology package you get all the what do you call it? Oh, okay oh okay that's how you turn it down cool okay if you get the vehicle with the technology package you get all the blind spot warnings you got the the first technology ever introduced is the predict predictive front clicking warning so let's say driving on the highway the two vehicles ahead a vehicle braking it will notify you they're okay there's two vehicles ahead stopping so how does it see the guy in front of the other guy because it's like a radar sensor in the front bumpers okay it just sense that it's, when you will drive it will just i mean keep on sensing these signals like a radar when you work at radar it sends these signals and signals come back same thing so go across that vehicle in front of you and go across the next vehicle they will let you know that packs will have the backup clean intervention which means which is also called bci which means when you're backing up less than five miles an hour it's gonna break for you if anything behind you okay if you're the 25 percent break of the whole vehicle and you will really feel this shot you'll have the blind spot warnings right here mm -hmm. in the technology package uh you get the Blind spot prevention, lane departure warnings, lane departure prevention, front clear warning. In the deluxe towing package, you will have the parking sensors in the front and the back. You will have the four camera 360 around view monitors in the deluxe towing package. Okay, you will have the adaptive steering control in the deluxe towing package, which means while driving, you can change your the steering mode. Okay, you can make it light, you can make it heavy, you can make it like I mean. Whatever you want to do mm. with that, you can just touch up the button, you can do that mm -hmm. in that package. Uh, you have the rain sensing windshield wipers in that package. Um, you have the Bose 15 speakers system. This one has 13 speaker, but still it's a Bose. Okay, so you turn the radio, you can still feel it. Oh, in fact, um, let me see, could you push the uh, speak button? You can interrupt voice prompts and speak a say, command immediately to, by pushing the top switch. Or you just say switch. the number. You can also like if you want to go to a radio station. Audio. Uh, oh, Play you have to look Bluetooth there first. Audio. It's, it's talk to. It talk so if you want to go to like 97.1 or 103.5, what do you do? You just see it from here. Oh, but you can't tell it to go to 97. You can do that, but it will just show, then you have to enter the number. Okay, we'll show you, okay, which number, like one, two, three, like you have to preset the channels. Okay. You preset, so number one, number 92.3, number two, there, you preset. Okay, all right, let me show you. you oh, oh, there it is, the radio button. Okay. I didn't even see Audio, it. okay, so you press it, and you can do from here. Ah. Uh, so number two. I mean, you can just... Well, this is a good song. I just wanted to see what the uh, speakers sound like. Sure, in this one. go ahead. Now, where's the uh, equalizer? Uh, what do you, what do you push by, like, audio? Uh, you know, you know no, the I, thing to tune I, it? I understand. Oh. I got it. You got to go to settings. Let's see. Audio. Okay. Balance, okay, okay, so if I put that one, okay, the balance stays the same. Alright, then the treble goes. There's no mid range though, I'm Okay. Yeah, you got the ball okay. center point, which is the mid speaker in the servo over in the back. Okay, alright. Yep. Yeah, I just wanted to know where that was. Okay. Yeah, but that's the car have navigation with, with the VRS. You can just press the VRS says navigation. You're like, okay. And it'll ask you, enter the city name, state, address. So you ask, okay, 855 Sunrise Highway, Lindbrook, New York. And it will take you over there. Same thing. You can interrupt voice prompts and speak a command. Information. Information. 
Please fuel say prices, huh? Oh, yeah. Information oh, yeah. come out showing fuel prices. <laughs> Gas is only, did, no, oh, here's a good question. I see it says 22 miles per gallon. Combined. What does this thing take? Is it regular, middle, uh, or premium? Premium. That's what the manufacturer recommends. Only premium. If you want that gas mileage, that performance in the car, 320 horsepower, you get better. But get can the you premium. use regular? You can use it. You can use regular. Can okay. Use I mean, not gonna harm the vehicle, but I mean, you know, you might not get that gas mileage this vehicle have on it. You know what I mean? Okay, There's 27 yeah. in the highway, 19 in the city, combined 22. I mean, you might not get it. You might feel a little bit of difference in the performance. Okay. I mean, it's a V6 3.7 liter with 320 horsepower engine. I mean, pretty V for V6, pretty powerful engine with non-turbos. Like 335i gives you 300 with the twin turbos. Okay, this yeah. one, is, I think they're better than that. One. So to get, um, so the fastest engine this car comes with is just the 3.7. Are they going to make a 4.5 or uh, are they just going to keep it? So they they might make the diesel turbo engine in the future, but I'm not sure. Yeah, she said it was just too big. <laughs> It's got good tires, like, yeah, it's smooth. Yeah, it's pretty smooth and quiet. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We got good technology features, yeah, especially this thing right here. I mean, you can send the email, you can send the voice text. You can you can, oh, you, you can do emails yep. for the voice? Yep. Oh, okay. That's cool. You can check your emails, you can add the Pandora, you can add the Facebook, whatever you want to do with it. Yeah, that's you great. can set your profile, you can set the, uh, another you like, you can, she can set your profile. So when you will enter with the vehicle with that key, it will ask you, okay, welcome Mr. Customer, like whatever your name is, it will show up right here in the front. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think the stuff you get in this car, the performance you get for that price, I mean, it's not that bad at all. I mean, and here's the thing, do you think it makes sense to go for one of these instead of a G37? G37 is a, I mean, you might get, a, I mean, she looking to lease or purchase? Please. Lease. G37, you might get a little bit cheaper, but I mean, it's the same engine, same performance, but you're not going to have all this stuff in that vehicle, you know what I mean? How fast does this car go to 60? How fast? Yeah. In 5.0 seconds, I believe, or a little bit more, maybe, or something like that. Hmm. I'm not sure exactly. But I got good torque. Yeah, because I remember this engine in the 44 was actually pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. The, the M45 was actually faster than I yeah, expected it to be. Yeah, it's a V8 engine. It's a little bit faster, than one of my cousins had bought one. He oh, yeah. he bought the 37, oh, okay. and then he went and got a 45. Right, right. Yeah, this is a really nice one. Yeah, it's a nice vehicle. That's the. I mean, I love this Infinity. It's cool. I mean, I mean it's a performance, innovation. It will make rivals right, skip that traffic. I mean, yeah, it's very quiet. Yeah, it's got I mean, some good pickup. I like it's that. Yeah, 270 pound of torque. I mean, so it's 300 horsepower, 270 torque. 328 horsepower. All right, all right. 328. All right. Yep. Oh, you make that yellow? You got it. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> good job. I mean, it's a nice ride. It's not yeah. bad. I mean, it's a smooth ride. It's a heavy car, like 4,700 pounds. The gross weight on this week. I mean. Oh, so it says two. Is it full of gas? It says two fifty-four miles per fill-up. Exactly. All right, yeah, that's good. My my car gets a hundred and fifty miles. Per yeah, full guys, like I, I understood that before I bought it. You can't complain. You I know. know no, no, no. There's no com <laughs> no complaint. I love it. I, I drive with smiles, man. Right, right. No complaints. No, what is it, six point four or six point four? Yeah, you used to six point one, right? Uh, older, my old one? one was a six point one, and I traded it. Right, but right. I, I had supercharged it though. Oh no! So I was getting more. like nine miles a gallon. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. I mean, what are the power on that stock? Like four and four seventy. Well, right? mine's five hundred. Oh, I, no, I had it tuned up. Right, right. The stock is four seventy, right? The stock is four seventy on the new one. The old one's four twenty five. But yeah. with with that old one, it was like I was getting way over six hundred yeah. with the with the equipment. Wow. Yeah. As soon as they uh, tune up the PCMs, because right now I think Chrysler doesn't allow you to uh, 
change uh, PCM codes and everything. Right, right. The guy who's going to tune it is this, this guy. He does uh, twin turbo Jeeps. Oh wow! Uh, he said they didn't. He didn't have the code yet. That's good. I mean, they don't make the stick shift, right? The uh, no, no, no. The only oh, stick shift you can get is the Challenger. The oh, Challenger yeah. has a six-speed trim tech, trim mac automatic. Uh, I mean, a manual six-speed. Yeah. I mean, that's nice. This is beautiful. I like this. Yeah. And, and I, before I go, I'm going to take a look at the tannish interior. Oh, okay. But she likes those light colors. Yeah, yeah they, they make up, they introduced in color, two new colors in this week. Uh, one is the, called the chestnut bronze. It's like a copperish brown color. Is that that one that the, the hybrid over there? It was like mm, a bronze exterior? Exactly, that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That that's was nice. The, it, was, nice it was pretty. Color. And another color is uh, called Hagen Blue. Hagen Blue. Right? It's like a sky blue color. That's pretty color. It's a nice color, nice sporty color. Oh, okay. It's not white, it's not blue. It's like in the middle, like an aqua color, you can oh, see. Look at the trunk. Does the, oh, does the back seats fold down or is it just stationary? Uh, no, the, delu the deluxe towing package in that now one, the back seats fold down. But okay, so it's a pass through. It pass through. Okay. And these come with the uh, spares? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, you got a spare and a jack. Okay. All right, that looks pretty good. Forty-two thousand four fifty-five as That's is. without navigation. Without navigation. Without navigation, thirteen. Thirteen hundred. Eighteen fifty. Eighteen fifty to add to this one. Thirteen hundred. Thirteen hundred. And G sedan is eighteen fifty. Yeah, this this looks good. You got seventeen inch all steel radio tires. Uh, you got LEDs all around front, back, diff, high beams, low beams. Oh. Yeah, that's good. That's very nice. This bad boy right here is an all-wheel drive premium. If you notice, you look at the wheels, these cars come with far more attractive wheels. And it's a very good looking car. Now this is the one that I'm taking out and this has the electric steering. And with this electric steering, first of all, this has a long list of options, but the bottom line is 54,000. Car starts at 41,350. It quickly accelerates with the $3,200 technology package, which gives you all pretty much all of the safety nannies that you can imagine now the deluxe touring package is the thing that we're talking about thirty one hundred dollars gives you direct adaptive steering which is basically electric steering to simplify it then we go down to the navigation and the navigation is handled by like a dual tier screen which are both touch screens i found that using the touch screen i actually found it to be a little bit distracting because as far as I'm concerned, if you can't fit everything into one screen, then you're doing it wrong. It's like you don't see people using two calculators. And the only people you see really using two screens are tax attorneys and people playing video games. So, the way, I mean, in certain applications it makes sense, but I feel in a car, I think it's a lot of distraction, you know. But this is really nice. You know? 19-inch sport wheels. These are some nice wheels, I have to say. And, uh, but the bottom line is you're looking at $54,000 to buy one of these bastards with everything in it. Now the question is, why should you spend more than just the navigation and the moonroof? Do you really need the safety nannies? And if you do need the safety nannies, how much of this other stuff do you really need? Now this is the lighter color interior. This interior is nice. It's a really nice interior. This is a nice interior. Now this one, this one, bright colored leather. Very, very nice, bright colored leather. Looks good. Now, we got the wood burl going on. We got the driver's memory seats. Now we got the uh, push button start. I got the key right here. Now, here's the thing. I, I'm posting one video just to show you how soft the drive is. Um, and the only thing about it is I want to try to be safe. So I'm not going to do anything crazy. Like, I, you know, I, I wouldn't want to damage a fucking $55,000 car when I go out. So I'm going to keep it safe. And, um, you know, just show you what you're buying when you buy this thing. So let me just uh, turn this bad boy on. 
Okay, um, this is when you turn it on. You got these uh, blind spot warnings are right here, right in the sides. You got the air vents, loading maps. Everything starts coming on. See, the, the two screen thing I have a problem with. If, in my opinion, drive, distracted driving has already gotten you know, a lot of rave because you got a lot of people getting an accident. So you got a lot of people who are using their cell phones and running into the back of people. That actually happened to me once in a different car. My uh, S550 got fucking hit by somebody who was fucking around in his car. And that's part of the reason why I drive so fast is so I can stay away from people. And I figure, you know, nobody can hit me in the back if I stay, you know, half a mile away from you. So at any event, okay, it's loading up. And uh, let me just turn it on. Okay, the thing's on. Let's see, automatic, automatic AC. It has some very nice driving aids. You can set all of this stuff. You can tell it what you want on, what you don't want on. That's all nice. Glove compartment. It's got the USB system. You have, uh, what is it called? Two USB ports, one RCA. You got the drive mode switch right here, which allows you to change modes when you're driving. This allows you to Push, you push that for the camera. When you push that for the camera, the camera automatically comes back. This has a 3D camera. It allows you to see what's around the car. That's pretty cool. So I could turn that off just by pushing that. Boom, it's off. Or you can change the view. Hey, if you want to change the view, that's pretty cool, right? Okay, so let's see. Push this one for map. Yeah, guess who they stole this system from? Mercedes-Benz and BMW got it. BMW put it out first in the 745, but Mercedes-Benz really perfected it with the S550. I'm very angry at Mercedes-Benz for screwing up what they did well in the W221 S550 by going back in the E-Class and going back in the CLS and putting all these buttons and shit up here. I should be able to control everything from right here. Unfortunately, you know, Mercedes fucked up okay so the navi system all this stuff is right here you can store a home location if you want okay let's see that, that let's see about the map set a location for the map whatever now the map is supposed to come up here but i think it's having trouble reading the card if there's even a card there but then again you already know what a nav map looks like so i'm not going to waste time with that okay you have you can put users into the car so you can have different users Driver assistance information, all that stuff comes up right here. Lane assist. This is actually a nice thing to do. Um, Chrysler has theirs as a single list that goes up and down. Mercedes doesn't do it like that either. They have like buttons. But this this is actually kind of a cool way to do it. The one problem I have is why couldn't this kind of be like the Tesla? Why couldn't this be either a widescreen, which makes way more sense considering the federal regulations coming up, or why couldn't it be a single screen up and down like an iPad that's just bifurcated like the Tesla does it? Um, I, I think that would have made a lot more sense. So basically, this is what you are spending $54,000. $54,000. This is what you're spending it on. Soft touch materials on the side. Very nice. I will say this, I actually like Infinity's interiors more than I do Mercedes interiors now. The new E-Class, the new C-Class, I'm waiting to see an S-Class. These cars that Mercedes is putting out, I'm very disappointed with them. They, they're too plastic -y. If you look around, you barely, you don't see any plastic in this car with like, okay, this is the first piece of plastic I spot. This is the second. These things I can understand, but there's very, very little plastic. Everything just looks nicer. BMW, they have a similar thing going, but their cars really don't change that much. So that's my problem with BMW. But I have to say they have very professional looking cars. So um, this is the Q. 50. This is $54,000.